Hello everyone. So here I have a confession to make or a confession. Basically, I'm going to well, yeah, confess because all this time I've been doing these videos and you know, I did the course and the book and all that, you know, how to be a successful freelance translator. And I've been trying to focus on teaching you how to be a successful freelance translator or how to be a successful freelancer in general. And throughout all this time, I've not once, I've checked all the videos, not once have I tried to focus on how to be an unsuccessful freelance translator. And so for all of you out there who are saying, well, I don't want to be a successful freelance translator. I want to be an unsuccessful one. Finally, 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 I'm going to make a video for you. This video is to teach you how to be an unsuccessful freelance translator. These are just a couple of tips, a couple of the preliminaries, but hopefully if you follow these steps, they'll be enough for you to be an unsuccessful freelance translator. They're just the basics. So anyway, let's get started with it. First of all, how to be an unsuccessful freelance translator. Tip number one. Here you have a choice actually, either never answer your clients or wait. So this is simple. When you get a request for a translation or maybe you've sent out an application and they ask you for more information, either A, don't respond at all, or if you have to respond because the email there is there and it's bothering you, so you have to get out of your inbox, you have to you know do something with it, at least wait to respond. I would say wait at least, I don't know, 48 hours. Um, anything more than 24 will work, but 48, the longer you can wait, the better. Just make them wait for that response because then this helps them to know that they're going to have to keep waiting every time they need a response for you. Okay. So it, at least it, you get them used to it right away that they're going to have to wait a long time for you to respond. So tip number one, never answer your clients or wait as long as you can to do so. Tip number two. Miss your deadlines here. If they give you a deadline, they say we need this Thursday by noon, then try to deliver it. I would say earliest by say Thursday, 3 p.m. You know, cause there, if, if, you know, if you feel embarrassed about it, something like that, at least there you can still say, oh, I was working on it, but there was a problem with the email or there was a problem with the this or that or whatever excuse you can come up with and just send it, you know, around 3 p.m. But if you can, it's better just to send it Friday, Pfft, whatever, send it during the weekend, who cares? At least there you can be sure that, well, uh, to be unsuccessful. <laughs> uh, tip number three. Don't proofread your work. This is a big one because too many translators there translate and then as even when they're done translating, they go through and proofread their work to check for mistakes, to make sure they translated something correctly, that they didn't miss something out or didn't use something incorrectly. And they go through it again to make sure that it's written well and written in a way that sounds fluent. If you do that, then you're just going to be successful. So, I mean, make sure you don't proofread your work. I would translate it very quickly and then just just close the document I, don't send it right away because that goes against tip number two but just close the document right there and don't deal with it anymore after that tip number four i think we're at what do i have oh formatting formatting format get about it that was a bad pun i don't even think that was a pun anyway forget about formatting because a lot of times you're dealing with PDFs and or you're dealing with charts, you're dealing with graphs, you're dealing with a lot of stuff that needs to be formatted. And if you deal with Microsoft Word, you know what can happen. You do, you know, you add one uh, space or one tab over here and then suddenly everything changes and all the format changes. You have new columns, you have this, that and the other. I would just not worry about that. In fact, Whenever you do the translation, just type it up. Don't worry about the formatting at all. If the initial document they gave you was five pages and suddenly you have seven pages and two of them are just on one column here and then that, I mean, that doesn't matter. Forget about format, formatting, don't even think about it. And if you have weird formats, it's even hard to look at when you're typing, get through that. That's what it takes. So don't format, good. Tip number, I think we're at five. I'm totally losing count, but anyway. Tip number five. Oh, this is actually a good one because it helps with the other tips. Wait until the last minute to translate. 
because this ties in well with trying to uh, miss your deadlines. That was tip number two. So here, uh, wait until the last minute. If you have that deadline, let's say Thursday at noon, I would wait until say Thursday when you wake up to do it. The best way to do this is to procrastinate a lot. So like the days leading up to it, say you're gonna start working, but there are a million other things you can find that can take up your time. Maybe you need to put in order your room, you need to run a bunch of errands, you need to you know, make sure everything is just so, you need to find the right place to do it because you go to a coffee shop but it's too loud, you go to another one and, and it's not loud enough. I mean, you know, you need some sort of noise around you. So keep doing stuff like that until the very last minute. And so you don't get started with your translation until the last minute. And then this makes it, like I said, a lot easier to then miss your deadline. It also makes it a lot easier to not have time to proofread your work and, uh, and to forget about formatting. So these really tie into each other and you know, one of these tips can help the other ones. So keep that in mind. Tip number six, I guess. Don't deal with follow-ups. Oh yeah, follow-ups. Because a lot of times you'll be sending a translation, especially if you've been paying attention to not proofreading and formatting and all that they're gonna have questions about your translation. Don't deal with that stuff. You did your translation, you sent it in. Don't deal with follow-ups. They have questions about anything. Or they wanna know about your formatting or maybe a mistranslation or whatever they, you know, they're talking about. Just don't deal with it. Once again, like I said, if it's really, that email in your inbox is really bothering you, then reply, but wait at least 24, 48 hours before replying, just so they know that they gotta take their time with you, come on. So don't deal with follow-ups is my recommendation. Uh, tip number, I think we're at seven here. Seven. Oh yeah, of course. Once all this is done, uh, add complications for payment. What I mean by this is at this point, you wanna tell your client, okay, I know I charge you a hundred euros, but actually there's also a tax, an 8% tax, so you owe me 108 euros. Oh, and by the way, I don't accept PayPal. I don't accept bag transfer, you have to pay me by cashier's check. So please mail it to my place, even though it's international, can you mail it? And in my local currency, because I need it that way. All these are great ideas for complicating the payment process. And this is really good because it makes it a lot harder for them to pay you. And so it makes it a lot harder for you to receive your money. And you know, that's awesome. So what you should do is just Try to figure out different complications. As much of the ones I've listed, or if you can come up with other ones, then feel free to add those as well. There are other ones that I've heard of. You can say, oh, but since you're based in this country and I'm based in that country, then I need this, that, and the other added onto it. Or other payment complications. Give them the wrong bank account number and then have them go through it a bunch of times before you tell them, oh no, that's the wrong bank account number. You know, pay me in another account or something like that. Just try to add as many complications as possible for the payment. And um, you know anything you can do to delay the payment as much as possible, and uh, and yeah, that's about it. Those are my top. In fact, you know what? Actually, I'm going to give you a bonus tip right now. Now this is more advanced. So that's why I'm using it as a bonus tip and not one of the main tips. But find a way to charge per target word instead of source word. So if you get a PDF, if you get a scan document, something like that, you can tell them. Look, I can't count the number of words there, so I'm gonna charge you per target word. And then when they say okay to that, up to a certain price per target word, what you can do is make very long sentences. Try to make your very long sentences even longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. See what I did there? Do stuff like that. Try to add adjectives anywhere you can. Instead of saying, well, that was the gentleman's jacket, you can say that was the gentle, that was the jacket belonging to the gentleman or something like that. Just add more words, whatever you can do. And because they certainly, they totally will never realize how awkward it sounds, of course not. And that way you can get a lot more words and then you can get totally get paid more, which will then get delayed because you're gonna be adding complications to payment. That's something they definitely will not pick up on at all. I mean, how could they? And so just made it, make it as wordy as possible. It's also because it's definitely worth your time trying to come up with different words for the extra sense you'll get per each word that you add and making a really awkward translation that you get to send them as proof of your work that you can do. So anyway, follow my seven steps plus the bonus and you are sure to be unsuccessful. You can thank me later.